Exodus chapter 25. And the Lord spake unto Moses. This is, this is a, this is a time in Israel when they've made it to Sinai. They've finally made it out of Egypt. They got all the way to mountain and God has spoken audibly to the people and told them the Ten Commandments audibly. It shook the people up so bad, scared them to death. And then God brings the elders up and he, they eat in the presence of the Lord. And, and then God tells Moses, Moses, I want you to come up into the mountain. And Moses was with the Lord 40 days and 40 nights, Exodus 24 and 18. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, that they bring me an offering of every man that giveth it willingly with his heart. Ye shall take my offering. Bring your offering to the Lord willingly of your heart. With your heart. Nobody's going to force you to bring an offering. You got to bring it from your heart. And this is the offering which ye shall take of them. Gold and silver and brass and blue and purple and scarlet and fine linen and goat's hair and ram skins dyed red and batter, badger's skins and shaitim wood, oil for the light, spices for the anointing oil, and for sweet incense, onyx stones, and stones to be set in the ephod and in the breastplate, and let them make me a sanctuary that I may dwell among them. God says, I want you to bring your offering, but I want it to come from your heart, because I want you to build a place of worship unto me. Hallelujah. Amen. Why don't you turn to somebody and say, I bless you in the name of Jesus. You can be seated. Boy, I feel like praising, praising him. I feel like praising, praising him. I'm going to praise him in the morning. I'm going to praise him all day long. I feel, you know, you don't even have to feel like it. I'm going to praise him in the morning. Praise him all day long. Hallelujah. I'm not going to be long. This ain't going to take me a long time. He said, I want you to give me an offering. First thing God requires when he brings Moses into his, his presence is he says, we need to get an offering together because we're going to build a temple. And we're going to build it out of gold and silver and brass. And we're going to make a place that I may dwell among them. And you're going to make it according to the pattern that I give you. And we know that the temple in the wilderness, the tabernacle, was a type and a shadow of what was to come, which is Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ was the temple of the living God in his body. And he said, I am going to be among my people. And the prophets prophesied that there would come a day when God would not dwell in a temple made with man's hands, but he would dwell in a temple made without hands. He was going to dwell in you. And he was going to be in you. Amen. But the thing about it is, if you're going to be a tabernacle for God, it's not going to happen by accident. It's going to happen because somebody has made up their mind I want to build a place for God. I want to build a tabernacle for the Lord. I want to make sure God's got a house where worship can go up. It was worship 24-7 in that tabernacle. It was worship from dawn to dusk. It was worship, amen, 24-7. There was a continual incense that burned in the presence of God. And the scripture says we are to pray without ceasing. We are the temple. Know you not that you're the temple of the Holy Ghost, so 
that? No, you're not. That you are the temple of the Holy Ghost and the Spirit of God dwells inside of you. But that doesn't happen by accident. I'm going to tell you right now, nothing happens by accident that's worth having. Come on, a move of God doesn't happen by accident. Church doesn't happen by accident. This worship service wasn't an accident. The prayer meeting earlier was not an accident. An apostolic move of God is not an accident. Amen. Preaching is not an accident. There's nothing that happens by accident. In fact, you know what it takes? It takes people that get up on their feet and say, we're going to go after the things of God. I'm going to press my way into something greater. I'm not going to settle for less than what God has for my life. Miracles don't happen on accident. Deliverance doesn't happen on accident. Salvation doesn't happen on accident. People coming out of drug addictions doesn't happen by accident. In fact, amen, if you ever got anything from God, it's because you went after it. You didn't get God by accident. God didn't surprise you by accident. You walked into this house on purpose. You stepped into an altar of repentance on purpose. God got a hold of your heart and you went after God on purpose purpose. Amen. Don't think that you can sit by, twiddle your thumbs, sit by idly and get something from God. You got to go after it. You got to make up in your mind, God, you either got all of me or you got none of me. You either got everything or you got nothing. What kind of an offering do you have for God today? What kind of a life are you giving him? You see, the Bible says that they begin to bring offerings. And they brought so many offerings that the workers said, Moses, you got to stop the people. It's too much. You ever heard a preacher say, all right, that's enough giving. The offering is too big. Can't handle it. There's stuff, with, there's, it was piling up. You know why? Somebody had a willing heart. Somebody said, man, I want to build a temple for the Lord. I want to build a place for the glory of God to dwell. Amen. You know what? Today, we're not just giving of our finances. We're giving of ourselves. What kind of a tabernacle are you building for God? Are you making a holy place in your heart? Are you making a place for the glory of God to dwell? You can sit around and you can just enjoy church services. Or you can say, you know what? This is not an accident. And I'm going to get involved in what God is doing. Now, I'm going to tell you, this is, this, uh, uh, I'm, I, I, uh, I'm going to tell you what, what I feel real strongly right now. Amen. If your prayers are only impacting what this can buy, you're praying too small. If your prayers are only about feed me, clothe me, take care of me, help me. You don't even believe God can do it. Hello. But when your prayers are for things that this can't buy. God, we got souls that are dying and going to a devil's hell. And we need salvation. We need a world to be saved. We need backsliders to come home. We need these children to be saved. We need somebody to get a burden and a call of God on their life and preach the gospel. We need more preachers, Jesus. We need more Bible study teachers. We need more men and women of God answering the call of God. It doesn't happen by accident. Come on, you're not going to have a move of God in your life by accident. You're not going to accidentally get a hold of God. You're not going to accidentally see a miracle. You're not going to accidentally work God, uh, work in, in God's kingdom. you got to make up your mind. If nobody else does it, I am going to give of myself a willing sacrifice. I'm going to give everything I got if that's what it takes. Jesus, if you want all of me, you got all of me. You know, when you start giving it all, that's the only time God can start telling you, oh, that's enough, you did good. I've had it happen in my life. God told me, don't give that much. 
Because in my heart, I was going to give it all. And God said, you need to take care of your family. And I said, wow, thank you, Jesus. You ever heard God tell you you're giving too much? Maybe you should try. <laughs> Maybe you should try giving it all. He doesn't want your money. He wants you. He doesn't want your gold. He wants your worship. He doesn't want the finances. He wants a tabernacle to dwell in. He wants a place where he can live and move and dwell. Is anybody in this room a tabernacle of God? Is anybody in this room here in the name of the Lord? Is anybody here saying, God, you got all of me. You don't have part of me. You don't have three-fifths of me. You don't have part of my attitude. You don't have part of my desire. You don't have part of my passion. You got every part of me. You don't become the tabernacle of God by accident. You don't see God work in your life by accident. The gifts of the Spirit don't happen by accident. God did not create the world by accident. This word didn't happen on accident and you are not an accident. You are here in the divine will of God. You are here by divine appointment. Somebody get in the, get in the harvest. Get into the labor field. Get off of the unemployment list and get in to the work field. You know, Jesus, you know, you can't buy souls physically. Now, you can give into the kingdom, and it translates to reaching the lost. Because when Israel quit paying their tithes, the priesthood shut down. And into bondage and captivity they go. You stop supporting the work of God, and it's just... Common mathematics. The lights are going to go out. Electricity is going to shut off. Government's not going to keep the church running. They're just not going to stop the church from happening. This doesn't happen on government subsidies. This happens intentionally. Because somebody says, I'm going to give of a willing heart. It's, listen, if it was just about money, folks, we wouldn't even have this. Somebody spent hours, thousands of hours, preparing their talents and their abilities and saying, God, you can have all of me. Somebody got in a prayer room and said, God, I don't want to just play an instrument. I want to be anointed by you. I don't want to just preach a message. I want the anointing of the Holy Ghost to saturate my life so that I can make an impact on somebody's life. This is not about money. This is about the heart. This is about you saying, God, you got all of me. You got everything. There's nothing withholding. I'm going to give you everything that I can. Every man that giveth it willingly of his heart, you shall take of my offering. God's offering is from a willing heart. And that's why in the New Testament it says the Lord loves a cheerful giver. Amen. Amen. The Lord loves a cheerful giver. Hallelujah. You're not going to become a mighty woman of God on accident. It's going to happen because you get up when nobody else is getting up and you pray and you seek God and you go into fasting and prayer and you read that word and study it. You teach that Bible study. You reach that lost individual, not because somebody else is doing it, but because you're determined. God, you got every bit of me. You're not going to be a mighty man of authority and walk in dominion and power because your friends are doing it. You're going to do it because you make up your mind and nobody else going to have to going to do it for me. I'm going to serve God with my whole heart. I'm going to get up and pray. I'm going to be the one seeking God. I'm going to get into the prayer room. I'm going to make a difference. Amen. Come on. We're not going to build the kingdom of God on half-hearted. I don't care. God, amen. Dear God, deliver us from lethargy. Dear God, wake us up and deliver us from complacency. This is the final hour. This is the 11th hour. Are there any laborers that need a job? Is there anybody that wants to work in the kingdom? Is there anybody that needs a paycheck? God said, you're for hire. Amen. I'm ready to hire you. I got a job for you. Work in the kingdom and you're going to get the same pay. Come on, somebody lift up your voice. 
Somebody lift up your face and say, God, amen. If you're willing, say, God, I'm available. Whatever you want from me, you can have it. You can have my family. You can have my job. You can have my future. You can have whatever you want of me because I'm yours, God. Every part of me, not just part of me, not just three-tenths of me, not just me. And then I've got my other side of my other life, and, and I got my, my other, other alter ego, and I got all these other activities I want to be involved in. No, you got to make up your mind. Amen, God. I'm all in. Amen. You got all. Does anybody have a willing sacrifice in this house today? Does anybody have a willing offering, a willing heart that says, God, I want to do whatever you want me to do. When the apostles built the church in the early church in Acts, it didn't happen by accident. When Jesus came to this earth and he established the church, it wasn't an accident. Amen. It didn't just happen. And do you realize today Amen. That as we're worshiping God and as we're planning our services and as we're investing in our time and we're building uh, facilities out and we're, we're paying for somebody to clean the house so it looks beautiful and we've got people that are working all around this place, volunteering hundreds of thousands of hours. All of that is a willing sacrifice. It's just a willing offering to the Lord that says, God, I want to do whatever I can to make sure people hear of you. Amen. You're not going to buy them. You're not going to go walk up to somebody and buy their salvation with dollars and cents. But you can put your investment into the kingdom of God. And then you can pray, God, I want to see a soul come into the kingdom. I want to see souls reach for the purpose of the kingdom. And then God begins to do the miraculous. Hallelujah. Amari, where you at, girl? Amari, you're not here by accident. <laughs> you're not here because you picked to be here. You know that, girl? You know why you're here? Jesus got a hold of you. Sarah, you know why you're here? Because God brought the chambers all the way from California and Arizona. Sister Chambers started working the ladies' facilities, getting people involved. Who came to your facility, Sarah? Sister Val. Shelly. Val and Shelly. And started teaching a Bible study. And here you are, girl. And your girl sitting next to you. Your future changed. But it wasn't an accident. Your future is changed. It's not an accident. Come on. Give God the glory. Give God the praise. Can somebody let God know how thankful you are uh, that he picked you up out of the dirt? He picked you up out of the miry clay. Come on. And some of you would have a same testimony if it wasn't for the grace of God. How many of you would be in prison today if it wasn't for the mercies of God? How many of you would be dead today if it wasn't for the mercies of God? How many of you would be high on drugs today if it wasn't for the mercies of God? How many of you today would be drinking that liquor and that alcohol just to go to sleep tonight if it wasn't and for the mer dear God somebody get a revelation amen this is about a work that no man can do only God can deliver a lot of people come to church and the extent of their offering and their worship is what they drop in the plate and the song that they sing and they go home but God says, I need a tabernacle that's 24-7. I need somebody to give me their whole life. Would you stand with me today? It doesn't happen by accident. But the Bible says, they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. For the Father is seeking such to worship him. The word worship literally is what you would do to a king in obeisance. You would lay down flat on your face and wait for the king to extend his favor to you and grant you your petition. You didn't come to the king in arrogance. You didn't come to the king telling the king what he was going to do. But when you heard the king was coming through, when anybody speak of the king, you know what they do? You always praise him. Long live the king. Long live the king. You praise the king. 
You worship the magnanimous king, the gracious king, and we serve the king of kings. We serve the Lord of lords. And when we come into his presence, what you saw tonight was a display of radical worship. What you saw tonight were people saying, God, you got all of me. I give you all the glory. I give you all the praise. Long live the king. He's going to live forever, folks. Our king is without days. He's without beginning and he's without ending. He's the first. He's the last. He's the alpha and the omega. The beginning and the ending. The one which has, which is, and which is to come. He never changes. Amen. And what he's looking for is a place to dwell when you get up tomorrow you're making a place for Jesus when you walk into this house when we walk into this sanctuary we're not coming in here just to have church we're coming in here to get some more people involved in the tabernacle process we need some more tents we need some more tents that are made without hands. I wonder if anybody says, God, I want you to live in me. I want you to dwell in me. Amen. How much of you does God have? Amen. Can somebody surrender to God? Because I believe God wants to pour out blessing that you can't contain. He wants to open the windows of heaven and give things into your life that you could never get. You can ask for things that money can buy. And you know what? That's all right if that's what you need. But I wonder if anybody wants to ask for things that money can't buy. Amen. I wonder if anybody wants to ask what Jesus asked for. Can you pray for laborers in the harvest? Can you pray for more people working in the kingdom of God? Can you pray? Pray for more people building churches and establishing works and saving souls and teaching Bible studies and building the kingdom of God. I'm going to challenge you tonight. This is what I felt in the Holy Ghost this week. What are you praying? Are your prayers temporal or eternal? Oh God, I need this. That's nice. God will give it to you. Quit praying about it. God, I want that. It'll, t it'll be taken care of. God, I, I need clothes and my children need food and it's all right. Don't you know he clothes the lily? Feeds the sparrow? How much more are you than lilies and sparrows? He'll feed and clothe you. He'll bless you. But I wonder if he can have the other part of you that says, God, I want to be a co-laborer. The enlistment is open. The signing bonus is great. Will anybody get into the Lord's harvest? Will anybody say, Lord, I'm not just going to sit around, watch the news cycle, listen to all the politics, it's not change in America. Well, it is, just not the way we want it to. The world's going its way. We're not into building governments. We're into building the government of God. The kingdom of God. And so, so I'm going to challenge you. What is the ratio of your kingdom versus his kingdom prayers? How much do you pray, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, versus God, take care of my kingdom and my will, thy kingdom come. I feel the Holy Ghost in this place. This is your chance to do it. Thy kingdom come. Thy kingdom come. Thy kingdom come. Does anybody want the kingdom of God to rule 
and reign. Would you lift up your voice and would you begin to intercede in the spirit that the kingdom of God would begin to rule and reign? Come on, he's not looking for an earthly place to establish his kingdom. He's looking for a kingdom without hands. He's looking for souls, people that will worship him in spirit and truth. Somebody do that right now. Somebody go ahead and lift up your voice and surrender your life. Give him an offering today. An of offering of your life. An offering of your service. An offering of your obedience. An offering of your willing heart. I wonder if anybody's got a willing heart today to say, God, I'm going to serve. I'm going to work in the kingdom of God. I'm going to do what you've called me to do. I'm going to pour my life out and give myself to you. As <laughs> I'm yours, God. All of me is yours. My abilities are yours. My talents are yours. My mind is yours. Your kingdom come. Your will be done in this earth as it is in heaven. In this vessel. Oh, church, I need to hear your voice. Come on, saints of God. Lift up your voice and begin to worship God. Begin to intercede. Come on, don't feel sorry for yourself. Don't feel beat up. Don't feel like you're not giving everything. My goodness, uh, this is a giving church. Uh, amen. You're giving of your life. Uh, you're giving of everything you've got. Now, why don't you just let God know, uh, I'm all yours. Uh, I'm all in. Uh, everything I've got is yours, God. Whatever you want of me, uh, I serve you. I serve you. I serve you. Lift up your voice, church. Come on. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Go ahead and pray in the Holy Ghost. I wonder if I could hear some apostolic praying right now. Some ap absolute authority and dominion. Somebody step into that authority dimension of prayer. That's where the kingdom begins to rule and reign. Is when the king begins to decree through your mouth with your authority. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. You begin to push back darkness. You begin to throw aside the weight of sin. You begin to break strongholds in prayer. Somebody lift up your voice as we did in the prayer room and begin to work with God in prayer. Come on, work with God. Work with God. Don't sit back and refuse to get involved, but be obedient to the Holy Ghost. Come on, you don't need to wait for someone else to pray. Just lift up your voice and say, God, you got it all. I'm going to pray in the Holy Ghost. I'm going to work in the Spirit. I'm going to labor, amen, to accomplish a spiritual work. Hallelujah. Come on, some of you, amen, you're already doing it. Do it again. Do it again. You're already involved. Take it up a notch. Amen. If you're not, just give God everything and say, let's go, Jesus. Let's do this work together. Let's accomplish your will. Come on, let me hear your church pray in the Holy Ghost pray in the spirit right now amen I surrender all I surrender it all again come on prayer doesn't happen by accident a move of God doesn't happen by accident spiritual authority is not an accident amen dominion is not an accident walking in the Holy it's not an accident doing the will of God it's not an accident walking in the spirit is not an accident come on I know we're not at a hundred percent but I think we can get a little closer right now if everybody would just begin to pray amen as you feel led in the spirit right now just pray according to what you feel let the liberty of the Holy Ghost amen loose you to walk in the Holy Ghost today in the name of Jesus I loose you amen of the weights of this world I loose you of the bondages and the confusion amen of the spirit of the enemy me. And I say, walk in the power of the Holy Ghost. Walk in the power of the Spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, I think you can do a little better than that. 
Somebody pray in the Holy Ghost right now. Obey the Spirit. Walk in the Holy Ghost. Amen. Thy kingdom come. Thy kingdom come. Thy kingdom. Come on, young men. What are you going to do? What are you going to give your life to? What are you going to invest yourself in? Are you going to invest it in the world system? Are you going to build the kingdom of God and watch God bless you? Amen. With abundance. If you'll seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, all of these things will be added unto you. Anybody willing to give God your all? Come on, I'm the temple of the living God. You dwell in me. You have all of me. your kingdom come let your will be done God's doing a work in you. God's doing a work in you. You can't buy that with money. God's doing a work in you. He's transforming your thinking. He's transforming your spirit. He's filling you with faith. He's giving you victories. He's giving you overcoming power. He's not interested, amen, in just what you can do. He's interested in you becoming a vessel, a tabernacle, a temple of the living God. Give him your heart today. Let him live inside of you. Dwell in you. Work in you. Let him fill you with his spirit. Yeah, somebody say yes to God. Somebody say yes to God today. Yes, God. Whatever you want, I say yes. Whatever you want, I say yes. Thy will be done. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. And I say yes to you. I say yes to you. I say yes to you. I say yes to my God. Your will, your kingdom, your purpose, your plan. I surrender my all to you. don't have half of me you have all of me let your will be done He wants to pour out his gifts. He wants to pour out wisdom, understanding. 
He wants to give things that nothing else can give. That no one else can give. He's got things for you that no one else has. But it's got to be His kingdom, His will, His purpose. I'm all yours.
Praise God. Have a wonderful Thanksgiving. No Wednesday service. We'll see you next Sunday.